Meow meow, Onyx the Fortuitous here. Um, I've decided that I'm, I'm gonna start doing reviews of like modern horror. Uh, Cause usually, I don't know, I only talk about like old 80s movies that nobody gives a fuck about. So uh, I'm gonna talk about like modern movies that all y'all seem to care many fucks about. <laughs> so um, help me name this new show. Uh, leave a suggestion in the comments below of what I should call this. I could, I could call it like Onyx's Modern Monster Mayhem or like um, Onyx's Hot Horror Ha 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 Horror Ha Hot Hoedown Horror ha, how, did, how did he know that all these new movies were so good? Or something? I don't know. Clearly I need help on the title department. Um, anyway, um, Y'all can also suggest what I should review next. Uh, but this week, I'm starting off with The Empty Man. Yeah, because everybody's talking about it. And they're all like, oh, did you actually know The Empty Man is really fucking tight? Oh, yeah, did you actually know The Empty Man is, like, terrifyingly scary and it kept me up all night? Uh, people are like, oh, yeah, did you actually know The Empty Man is, like, a modern horror masterpiece? Oh, yeah, um, this just in, that's not true. Yeah, I'm sorry, y'all, but that's, uh, that's not true. Uh, but let me explain. Now, I know that Empty Man kind of postures in grandeur, and I know that Empty Man kind of uh, presupposes that it's an epic prestige horror film with a lot of high concepts to unpack. Um, but the thing is, I don't think it actually unpacks those concepts, and I, I don't think it sticks the landing, which to me is the most important uh, about any movie, not just horror films. Like, you kind of got to stick the landing. Like, imagine if I was a gymnast, and I, like, did a big, wicked cool floor routine, and you were like, that's tight. Oh, that set piece is tight. Oh, that scare worked. Oh, I like those characters. But then when I went to stick the landing, instead of sticking the landing, I shit myself. And there was just, like, doo-doo all over the crash pads. And, every, and all the judges were like, oh, nine point. Oh, fuck, he shit himself. Instead of landing correctly, he shit himself. Oh, I guess I'd have to give him zero points on the floor routine because he shit himself at the end. So, yeah, I think the empty man shit himself. Um, don't get me wrong, it was tight in the beginning. I love the setup. I love a 25 minute long intro. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, how it went out in the snow, the empty man, uh, or, or that like, or the specter, or, uh, uh, or the phantom, uh, or the spirit from the, um, Bone Man, whatever he was, he was just kind of like back in the snow, kind of like, oh yeah, maybe I'm going to come for you, or maybe not. Psych, I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you. Yeah, I was all about that, and I'm all about James Badge Dale. He rips, dips, and trips. <laughs> um, and I even like uh, when the kind of like moody noir ambiance started, and he was like looking into these kids that had all like hung themselves under the bridge, and he was like not even scared by it. He kind of went under the bridge and was like, huh, okay, four dead kids. Pfft, another night for JBD. <laughs> Yeah, but I was all about all of that. Um, and then I was even all about the kind of like big picture questions it started to ask about just kind of like how nothing is nothing and everything is everything and everything is nothing and nothing is everything. And uh, Communicable thought. Yeah, I'm real into the idea of communicable thought. I don't know. Like if I think something, does that make you think something? And what leads to a zeitgeist explosion? Yeah. And like, um, is cognizance something we can enter into as a group? Um, or will I always feel alone? <laughs> so, don't get me wrong. I'm no dum-dum. I think big all the time. Yeah. Kind of like Aleister Crowley in that sense. Or L. Ron Hubbard. Wait, I'll take that back. Never mind. Don't. I didn't say either of those things. I'm not like either of those men. But I guess I'm just saying that my head is always in the clouds. And I like a horror film that dives deep and thinks large. It, yeah. But the problem is, once it started getting going, and you got into all the cult business, even though Stephen Root ripped my fucking face off as the cult leader. Um, I just don't think it delivered on its promises. And uh, especially a movie with a two hour and 20 minute long runtime. You best be delivering, son. <laughs> Can y'all imagine if you ordered something from Postmates and they were like, it's going to take us two hours and 20 minutes to get there. But when we do, yeah, but when we do, yeah, th when we do, it'll be the best burger you've ever had. Oh, psych, it's covered in shit. Yeah, psych, we shit on your burger. But it took two hours and 20 minutes to get there. Ha <laughs> ha! Forgive us. Please don't ask for a refund. No, I would like a refund, Empty Man. My Postmates delivery was Empty Man, and he shit on my burger. So, yes, I would like a refund. Um, I still ate the burger. Yeah. I, I still ate it. But uh, what I mean is I still watched Empty Man in one sitting. All two hours and 20 minutes of it. So something about it must have worked. Because there was still burger there. But then they just put shit on top. But I could taste more of the burger than I could taste of the shit, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm sure it does. My, my metaphors track. <laughs> yeah, 
Obviously, there's a lot of great scares. When he's on the other side of that lake and he's seeing that group run around that bonfire, y'all know that was tight. And I'm not here to say stuff in the movie wasn't tight that obviously was tight. That part was tight. Certified tight. And I love a slow burn. My favorite filmmaker, other than Joe Dante, is Michael Haneke. And Michael Haneke is all about making movies that are like three hours long where nothing happens, but in the end, everybody kills themselves. And I'm always like, you hit another one out of the park, Haneke! But the problem with Empty Man is that it ultimately just slid into the same tropes that we see in shitty horror films. So what's better, a shitty horror film that says it's shitty and is shitty, or a horror film that says it's something more than shitty that still moves in all the shitty ways? I mean, for instance, for something that says it's about all these large concepts, it ultimately gives us the same movie that we've seen a thousand times, where people are compelled to kill themselves or kill others for no apparent reason. And sure, it's spooky, but it's also a little bit predictable. <laughs> I'll think about The Happening. I'll think about Bird Box. Hell, I'll think about Suicide Club. And y'all know I don't want to think about Suicide Club. But the biggest problem for me, spoiler alert, is once we get to the end, if you have to have a character explain to the main character just what's gone down in the movie, then you done fucked up, son! Especially if you've had two hours and 20 minutes to give us that reveal organically through action or character's internal revelation. But instead, it still amounts to a single character saying, This is what's happened. You are our tulpa. We made you from thought to flesh. And now let me walk you through the entire film and explain it step by step so that you understand it. And so that the, so the audience understands it too. Are you getting this audience? Because I'm saying it. And I'm a character that's explaining it to him. But it's really for you. Because I need y'all to catch up. Cause I need, cause it is a little bit of a, it's shoehorned in. I'm not gonna lie, the twist is a bit shoehorned. So it's gonna take me some time to get through to him, JBD. But I'm also hoping that, hoping that you get, that you get it as well. Cause I need you to get it. I need you to walk away from this knowing exactly what the fuck I tried to pull off in two hours and twenty minutes. But I've gotta explain it in five minutes. Oh God, it's bad relevatory exposition. Also, it kind of just doesn't make goddamn sense, because if he's a tulpa, then none of that shit ever happened. So why are you even showing us the flashback where he fucked that woman and put the stockings over her face while he fucked that woman if it wasn't even real? And why did that chick's dad's funeral matter? And if none of that happened, then why are we having to see him live through it a second and third time? And why were there two of him? If he was a tulpa, then he existed only as flesh because of their thoughts manifesting. So when was the other guy made? Was he real and the other one was a tulpa? Or were they both a tulpa and they were split into two guys? guys or were they both just bullshit i respect the filmmaker he's a fucking mad hound dog his name's david pryor and he was the documentarian for uh david fincher for like all of his fucking bomb ass movies and he's no doubt got a vision but as i watched it and i got to that twist and he was revealed to be a tulpa i thought huh i bet that didn't come in until like the fifth or sixth draft because this seems like a messy rewrite and then i listened to a podcast where david pryor said that tulpa business it didn't come in until the fifth or sixth draft and it required quite a surgical rewrite and that's what it felt like as I was watching it. I think they just should have played it straight like Wicker Man. And not had any cosmic switch up funny business. I think ultimately the cosmic switch up undermined the integrity of the movie we just lived through. Just like in any bad movie where the main character wakes up and realizes it was all a dream. Or I was just a tulpa. Or I've been dead all along. But the difference in Sixth Sense is it was revealed a little more organically than having a character explain it to him and explain it to us. Explain it to him then explain it to us. There were visual cues and a visual language established within the film that helped us get to the revelation at the same time the character did without what I call a big dirty data dump. So all in all, The Empty Man was partially tight and partially tropey and had a big ol' fat dirty data dump at the end that I deem unforgivable. Whew! So, yeah. Help me name my new show. I'm gonna review modern horror stuff like American Horror Story garbage and, um, other new horror stuff that I may love. Y'all never, y'all may never know. I might love new, new horror stuff. Candyman looks tight. Maybe I'll love Candyman. Huh? Help me name my new horror show. I promise, maybe I'll love Candyman.